Hey guys. Hey, hey, how's it going? It's like we got five people on and I see Mary and Sierra for sure. Looks like Sierra's cutting some fabric. So that's awesome. I'm gonna have somebody sewing with me. Hey, Sarah. How's everybody's weekend? Looks like a lot of people got snow. A lot of people were posting their snow pictures. You can keep it. <laughs> Nita, hey, hey. Hey, Naya. Hey, Lisa. Candace, hey, how you guys doing? Hey, Jolie. Danny. So I know I have Sierra sewing with me. Is anybody else sewing? Hey, Sandy. Hey, Robin. Hey, Joanne. Good to see you too, Joanne. It's been a little while, hasn't it? So this is what we're doing tonight. The little skirted bummies. So I know everybody's been doing bummies. So I thought, well, we need to revisit the bummy pattern, but let's revisit it and put a skirt on it. Uh, Robin, you're sewing. Okay, cool. Okay, Naya, you're doing a Malibu dress. Nice. Nancy, hey. That's okay, Lisa. Nita, yeah, you better be working on those orders, girl. Definitely. Definitely. So anyway, this is what we're doing. Just a simple little, it's just bummies with a skirt added to it. So super easy. What are we eating for dinner, Nancy? I just had dinner, so you're not going to make me hungry. <laughs> hey, Evelyn. Thanks, Danny. Hey, Mary. So, Mary, there you go. That's what we're doing. Your little girls are going to want them. You're going to want them for summer. All right, so I know I've got Sierra sewing with me. Anybody else? Hey, that's all good, Danny. You let them clean. Absolutely. I wish I could get mine upstairs to at least vacuum. I got to do that later when I go back up. It looks like a, an explosion up there just because I'm vacuumed today. <laughs> okay, Robin. So I have two. Sierra and Robin. Okay. Robin, have you cut your pattern out yet? Hey, crafting away. Thanks. That's okay. That's all right. You can always go back and do it later. The um, material list is in the description of the video. Um, so those that are sewing with me, depending upon the size of skirt, that you're doing, or sorry, the size of the bummies that you're doing, the skirt itself, you're gonna wanna do, um, if it's real small, if you're doing anything smaller than say the six to 12 month, then you don't want this dimension. So I'll give you the dimension for six to 12 and up. So you'll wanna cut your skirt six inches wide by about 30, about 34 inches, not quite the width of the fabric. We don't want it super, super full. This, I tried it and this was actually 36 inches. If you like the 36 look, do 36, but I would say 34. If you're going from the newborn up to the six to 12, you want your skirt length to be five inches and then you probably want a round to be about 30, 30 to 32. So this one's 34 to 36. So the smaller 30 to 32 by five inches, larger 34 to 36 by six inches. Okay, Robin, you're three, three months. So you want, you want the smaller, the 30 to 32 by five inches. So depending upon how much fabric you have and how full you want it. Like I said, this one's really full and you may not want it quite that full, so. 
Hey, Eddie. How you doing, girl? I've been thinking about you a lot. I've been lurking in the chat. Sorry, I need to join in. I'm super crazy busy. But your little girl. Those pictures are precious. Precious. Love it. Yes, thank you. Please hit the like button, guys. That really helps me out. So once you girls tell me, oh boy, you know what? I left my pieces upstairs. Can you girls chat amongst yourselves? I will be right back. Five minutes, if that. Got down here and everything's like right there, but yeah, that's something just going. Nope, nope, I've got something. I know what it is. My cut pieces. Nah, how's it going, Nairo? Yay. Hey, Diamond Boutique. All right, those that are coming in late, not not to mean anything by it. <laughs> no, not didn't mean anything by that. Just saying, I already showed this, so I'm gonna show it again. This is what we're doing. Doing the little skirted bummy. So we did the bummies last year, about this time. Um, they're all knit, Evelyn. Everything on this is knit fabric. So we did the bummies last year. So that's the same pattern we did last year. We're just adding a skirt to it, okay? That's all we're doing. So I wanted to revisit that one more time because I know a bunch of you have been attempting that. So I knew you'd be familiar with it, and this would be a really good one to take you one step further, okay? Oh, thanks, Angela. Thanks, Naira. Oh, that's okay. That's okay, Naira. There's a lot of people that are just doing some things too. That's all good. I'm waiting for my two girls to say they're done cutting, and we will go. So I'm gonna be doing the exact same one again. No different fabric, nothing, okay? Hey, hey. So what do we got? 23 people in here, 13 likes. Can everybody hit the like button for me, please? I really appreciate that. Hey, Barb. Hey, Juana. Oh, no. Danny, is she okay? So I'm doing um, a jersey knit on the bottom, just a plain jersey knit. And then the top is just a little bit thinner. And it's, and both of these are from Joann's. So I'm just doing a thinner knit on the top. So it'll be a little lighter weight of a skirt. Oh, thanks, Mary. All right, so you're going to recognize the pieces. So I, just real quick, I don't want to show this too much just because it is a paid for pattern. So I don't, you know, I'm going to just do that. Um, so anyways, there's four pieces here. So you've got your back, your front, and then your cuff and your waistband. So you got four pieces that you're going to be using. And then the fifth piece is not a part of that pattern. It is just a straight cut for the skirt. And again, I now will put this in the description. I wasn't 100% sure of the size until I sewed the sample. And I did the description 
way before I did the sample. So I'll go back in and edit the description. But if you're sewing um, under a six to 12 month, you'll want to have, you want to cut a piece of knit fabric that is five inches wide by 30 to 32 inches long. Your choice on how full. 30, it won't be quite as full. 32, it's going to be a little fuller like this. And then anything above that break line, you're going to want to do six inches by 34 to 36. This one's a 36. And it's okay. I kind of like how full it is, but yet I was, my brain was kind of thinking it might be just a little bit less full. So the 34 will pull it down just a little bit if you don't want quite that much gathering into it. And so those are just straight cuts, just a straight cut piece of fabric. Okay. Hey, Pia. Hey, yay. All right. Girls, are we, are we close to being done cutting? You still need a few more moments. And if you wanted to, you know, this would be a good way to use up smaller pieces of fabric that you find. So maybe you see something really cute in your stash, but it's not wide enough or enough of it to make a full item. Well, then you can make a skirt out of it. And if you've only got two smaller pieces, you can always do a seam on each side instead of just doing one full cut. So say you had two smaller pieces that you could only get like half of it. That's okay too. So you just have a seam on each side instead. So it'll be a good stash buster for you. And you could even get really crazy if you had two coordinating fabrics, say, say like this one was in tan and then it was also maybe say in white as the background. I could do one side is white and one side is tan on the back. You know, you could just have a lot of fun with this little skirt. Yes, the skirted material is knit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want that to be knit as well. You could probably do woven. I would be afraid though, that when you go to put this on, you're gonna pop this stitch all the way around here if it's woven and not knit. So that's why I'm gonna say, no, I'm gonna say knit only. All right, Robin, Sierra, are you guys done cutting? You still need a few more moments? And then the other thing I forgot to put in for tools was clips and or pins. Hey, Liz. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to grab some pins just in case. And guys, I'm going to take you through the extreme, very beginner part of this, okay? There's going to be a bunch of people that have different ways of doing things and that works too but okay sarah um but i'm doing this very beginner 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 so um some of the things we'll talk about when i get to to say yeah you can do it this way that way that way and then that way um um uh you can angela i i got mine just off of her website but yeah she says it on etsy as well whenever Whenever I have a choice between Etsy and their own website, I always use their own website, less fees. I know it doesn't help them in their sales, but less fees, more money in their pocket. Oh, Ediana, you're going to do it too. Awesome. Cool, cool. So yeah, if you guys did the bummy so long with me last year, you already have this pattern. So that's, yeah, I just wanted to revisit the same pattern. I didn't want to reinvent it again with a whole nother pattern. All bummy patterns are pretty much similar. So if you have another bummy pattern, you can still do this along, you know, with this video by using your other pattern. They're all going to be done about the same way. So. I can't believe we had sunshine finally today. Oh, I've been so deprived of the sun. It's been so gray down here for way too long. Good. Okay, cool, Evelyn. Yeah. Now, um, if you guys want to do a little easier cutting for your 
rotary blade. I took an old, I took an old mailbox, a box that I got something in. So yes, it says priority mail, but it was a box I re received something in. So I'm recycling this, okay? So recycle any boxes that you get in the mail that have things come in and use them to put your patterns on. So I glued it. See, I'm not going to show you the front much. Just again, paid pattern. I don't want to show it. Um, so we, um, I glued it, cut it out. And then when I lay it down, it's just real slick to go around with my rotary blade. Every now and then I'll catch it with my blade. No big deal. But it's not like the paper. You can just hold it down with your hand and just zip right around it super fast. So I highly recommend that, especially if you're going to do some bulk cutting and you want to make a bunch of things. That thickness of those mailing boxes is perfect. It's just thick enough that it makes it nice and solid and it gives you just enough depth for your rotary cutter. And then, you know, if you want to, you can have your kids sit down and glue it all down for you. And then you just cut them out um, with... Uh, I just use like, you know, your regular, regular uh, scissors. Hang on. I've got a deer that thinks he's going to eat my cat food. I will be right back. She's my little mooch. And she always knows I'm in here watching her too. And so whenever I feed, I feed twice a day and I watch for him. And she kind of, she peeks and she looks through the door like, are you watching? <laughs> and she's like crazy. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to take one real quick. And then I start walking towards her and she's like, ah, caught. <laughs> yeah, random deer eating cat food. It's like, they are so fat out here. So many people feed them. So she doesn't need food. She has plenty. She's not skinny by any way, shape, or form. And then I put out like my, my cuttings for all my produce, like my, you know, celery and my carrots and stuff like that. So she, they love that, but I stick that way out in the driveway so that they get, they don't, they're not even close to where I feed the cats. So they get, they get the good stuff, but they think they need the, uh, the treats. No. <laughs> okay. So now, um, Ediani, are you ready? Because the other two girls are good to go. Now, if you have a serger, pull your serger out. If you don't, you can use a regular sewing machine. Okay. So um, the regular sewing machine, you will do a stretch stitch. Let me see if mine shoes, if I can show which one it is. Okay, so my stretch stitch is going to be a zigzag that looks like a dash. Dash, 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 dash. And you want to take the one that has the most dashes because some of them you'll have two of them and the dashes will be further apart, which means it won't be as stretchy and as forgiving. So if you have a choice between two, if you have to just do a real quick sample and see which one it is, if you can't tell from your machine, from looking at it, but uh, yeah, the one that has the most dashes in each leg of the zigzag is the one that you want if you're doing a regular sewing machine, okay? And we are going to use the regular sewing machine, girls, for the ruffle, okay? So make sure you've got that sitting nearby if you're if you're using a serger, okay? Because we won't be able to do 100% of it on the serger. You, I can take that back. You can, the way that I did it, I can't. So we'll get, we'll talk about that when we get to it, okay? All right, so let's grab our serger or your sewing machine. And we're gonna work on putting the bummy together first. So. I'm gonna have to, there we go. Move this down a little bit. All right, so what I like to do is I like to chain sew. So I've got my two, my two cuffs for the legs. And then I also have my top cuff, okay? So we're gonna chain sew those together. Those are super fast to do.
And if anybody wants to know, I have a Juki, the MO654DE, and that's the one I'm using. I've had this one for, oh my goodness, seven years, six years, seven years. Ediani has this one as well. And this thing is a little workhorse. Yeah, I just love this. Love this. So chainsaw, which means you do not cut. You just thread right on going. I'll go back and cut them apart. That's what chain sewing is. So now I have this one and the two cups already sewn. Those are done. Now we're going to sew. And I will stop and wait for you girls. We're going to sew the back to the front. Now, if you have to use pins, or clips, please do so until you get used to it. I had to do it the first 15 or 20 until I got used to it. And then as I got used to knowing where everything had to line up and how everything stayed together, then I was able to not have to use those anymore. So do not beat yourself up for having to use pins or clips. If you use pins, make sure you get them out here, completely, oops, completely out away from your foot. Sorry, I've never, there we go. Get them away from your foot so that you can just zip down the side and you don't have to worry about catching them with your knife, okay? If you're using um, clips, then you're gonna have to pull your clips out as you go. Susan, I do. I paint. Um, actually, what you're seeing in the background is um, I dye fiber and yarn from my other Etsy store. And that is also down in the description if anybody's curious what that looks like. But um, those are jars with dye in them for that. But yeah, I do paint. Um, Wana, I'm using a jersey. So the under bummy, let me back this up so I can kind of really show you everything. So the pink part is all a jersey knit. And then the top part is just a lighter jersey knit. And we'll just, I'll describe the two differences for you because these are different in the way that they are made. And we'll go over that. In fact, I'm going to do a little video on a way that I showed somebody the difference between woven and knit. And they really liked it. So I'm going to um, just do, I'll, I'll incorporate it at some time here in the next couple of weeks into one of the videos, whether it's a live or a video. And that way you guys kind of understand woven versus knit because it's in a much bigger bag. Okay, so now I've done the two side seams. So the next part we're going to do then is to do the crotch seam. So I always put my two corners together and you'll notice they're not 100% cut the same semicircle and that's okay because when we go and um, sew that together, it's going to naturally just kind of cut it anyway. So it's all good. doesn't have to be exact. Now this part 
If you're not used to doing curves on your serger or even your sewing machine, just take it really, really slow and you'll be fine. Okay, I'm not gonna leave the girls behind. Where are you guys at? So we've got the side seams and the crotch sewn. And then the waist and the two leg cups. I'll wait for you girls to say you're caught up to me. And that's okay if it takes you guys a little while. We're not in a hurry. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to start turning my, my cuffs and my waistband in half. Now, what I use for clips, and I only use this, is because I've had them, and I didn't want to go spend any more money. But I've got the little binder clips that you use, like, with your paper at the office. And I've, I use these on my leather. So I've had these for quite a while. Okay, Sierra's good. So I'm folding my legs in half, lining up the seams. I'll show you how I do that. I just did one to show you. And moving out with that serger. Are you talking to me? Oh, thanks, Mary. So are you asking which serger I have crafting away? Oh, it's fast. Okay, yes. Let me show you one more time. While I'm waiting to see if all the girls are caught up. Okay, I have the Juki MO654DE. Unfortunately, it's backwards. Sorry. Hey, Carolyn. But that's the one I've got. Yeah, it is fast. This is a super fast one. And it also goes through every thickness. I don't have to slow down when I get to like, you'll notice when I'm doing these and then I get to where I have like several seams together. I don't have to slow down at all. Mine just, it just cuts right through it. And I know some sergers, they will kind of eh, hesitate a little bit. This one does not. And this one's a really easy price on, on the wallet guys. I bought this long time ago and it was about a hundred dollars more than it is now. So it's it's a real good price. I think I saw them for like three, three seventy nine, something like that, not too long ago. So that's a real good deal. I think I paid about four fifty for this seven years ago. Oh, the bullet. Okay, let me show you, Wana. While I'm I'm waiting to make sure everybody's caught up, I will show you what bullet is. I think I threw away my big bunch and all my other boys and stairs. Bullet has kind of like a texture on the top. And it's a little bit rougher. I know we're in the middle. We're going to quite over. You know, as you cut, you just kind of come on in one area. I know we were talking about this the other day, and I ran down and bought it, and I might have bought them all. And even my samples are upstairs. I was inventorying everything, trying to fill in my gaps in my inventory market. Um, 
I can't remember what it is. Lunch and connect. Now I gotta figure out where I can put the bunch of it too. Because I have so many yards of it. And I gotta save for next Christmas. Anyway, um, we'll go over that too. When I talk about the woven and the knit, we can go over the different types of knit. But yeah, the bullet has the texture to it. I am cutting as I surge, yes. So um, a lot of times though, what I do is I don't take a deep cut. I will run my fabric right at the edge of that knife. And sometimes it just cuts so minor of amount. It may seem like it's not cutting at all. And I have just like these, in fact, that's what I'm picking right now is I have like these little teeny scraps. That's, I mean, that's how small I'm cutting off sometimes. So, but yeah, I always, I always run the knife right along the edge of the fabric. There's times though I take more off if I um, feel like I didn't take the time to cut my fabric and I knew I would, I would get a better straight edge just when I surged real fast rather than take the time to cut it. So. Okay, so, oh, it wasn't backwards, Ediana. It was on my screen. Okay, cool, cool, good to know. Because, yeah, everything I'm looking at here, it shows me backwards. All right, so what I'm doing now is turn your cuff. I was just showing you this one. Turn your cuff, match your seams. So you turn it in half so your seam goes on the inside not on the outside so your seam is on as you can tell it's on the inside and it's perfectly in half so then i take two of my clips i put one where the seam is and then hold it like that and then my other one goes over here so you can see that's how I'm finding where my other half is because there's no seam there. So then I'm going to put that there. So I have a clip on each, okay? So now we're going to take your bunnies, leave them inside out. Now, if you have plain fabric, you don't have to worry about making sure that you've got the pattern going the right direction when you put these in. If you have a fabric that matters as to which way the pattern goes, so like, um, I'm just gonna, I just got a scrap of this here. So like this one would matter, my little Christmas scrap. That would matter. So I would have to pin them in there, flip them in there, and then double check and so I'm going to show you how I double check just in case you are using a directional fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cuff on the inside. Okay. So I'm inside out and the cuff is on the inside. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to match up my inner seam. I always take the crotch seam. That's me. If you do the outside seam, that's fine too. Doesn't matter. You can do either one. That I take a seam to that clip, clip it on. Go across to the other side where the other clip is. Now remember, this is the one that does not have the seam, so don't pull this clip off. Just hold it up. Hold it up to that. That way you know exactly where you need to clip then pull it off as you're holding it and clip it, okay? So when you're done, it'll look like you can't see it, okay? Because it's on the inside. Now, what I'm gonna do just to check, I'm gonna go ahead and clip again, and you can clip on the other side too if you want. So I'm just gonna clip in the middle. And then if you do the same thing again, but you've got a fold of the fabric as well, match these two together 
so that you can see and then come back, pull it out and clip in the middle. Now we don't really have to ease these on much, but we have to ease just a little bit. So by doing that, if you're not comfortable with doing it without these, then you could just sew from clip to clip. Once you have done these a few times, you probably won't need these middle ones for the legs. I still use them for the top because it's just too much fabric and mine ends up getting all kind of funky wonky if I don't do it that way. Okay, so how am I gonna check to make sure if I have a pattern material that needs to be going the right way? So I'm just gonna turn it inside out real quick and see how it would look if it was sewn. So you'll be able to tell if your fabric, say we're back to this again, so if you've got it on the wrong way, it's going to be hanging upside down. And so you're going to know, oh, okay, that's wrong. So you're going to go back in, you're going to pull this off, and you're going to reclip it because you're going to turn it inside out. Because you had it this way when it was wrong, so you just flip it inside out and reclip it. And make sure, though, when you pull it off, just save yourself time. You put the clips, keep the clips where they were. So that's how you check for directional. And I do the same with the top. I always pin it in and then I go in and I pull it apart like I'm sewn it and just check. And I cannot tell you how many times that I didn't check and I had to rip it off. I thought it was right because I'd been doing so many and I was like, oh no, I know it's right this time. I know I got it right. Wrong every time. So I have to check it every time. Uh, thank you, Crafting Away. Okay, so we're gonna do that with both of your cuffs, okay? And I'm starting with the cuff because the cuff, we gotta do the, the, um, the skirt before we put this on, okay? This is the last piece, this top piece. Very, very, very last is the top cuff, which is this, okay? So if you're worried that you're gonna get ahead of yourself, put this off to the side. I do that too. There's times when I'm like, oh, okay, and put that on. And then, oh, what was I thinking? So we'll put this one on. Again, seam to seam on the first one, if that's where you're starting. I always start on the seam. That's just something I've always done. You don't have to. We get in our own little habits. And once you do something one way and it just kind of goes that way, it's fine. All right. So I'm not going to pin these other two because I'm used to it. I was just showing you guys how to do those if you needed it. Okay. So now let's go sew these on. And you're going to just slightly stretch as you go clip to clip. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do the small clips. And then on the second one, I'll show you how I do it without these second clips because for me, once you get used to it, these kind of get in the way. But until you learn, you're going to need them. It's kind of like training wheels. So don't be hard on yourself. If you've got to keep pinning, you got to keep using little extra things. It just takes time. You will get used to it. Okay. So let me see if I can figure out how to get you guys up a little bit. I'm going to be able to... For some reason, my light is burning out on that camera. Sorry, guys. And it doesn't help that I've got that light colored fabric either. That's burning it out even more. But you're going to take and you're going to pull this to tie and ease it. You're not going to pull hard. You just want to take a little bit of a stretch to get those to line up nice and flat. It's not, you don't have as much give you have to go through on the cuffs as you will when you get to the waistband. And then I always make sure all my tails are out so that they get cut as I go by. And then I'm also one of those, I like my seams to go underneath. And a serger just doesn't like to do that. They want to push them. So I always have to stop and shove them under with my scissor. So take your time. So I went to that clip. I removed the clip. 
Now I'm going to go to this next clip. Remove the clip. And just make sure everything's nice and positioned and flat before you, you sew on. Okay. Move the next clip. Get my tail out there. Make sure everything's where it's supposed to be before I go. A lot of times, too, with that tail, you can kind of help guide your seam, the, the seam under. If you like yours to push forward, that's fine. I just, I've always done mine to go under. Now when I get to this last part, you're going to have this little funky kind of part where you started. So sew so past it. I go past it about an inch so that everything stops really nice. If you stop right there and come off, you're going to have this funky little thing happening when you turn your your legs and you're going to be like, what is that? And that's because you didn't get it in line with your stitching. So you want to go about an inch past it so that it'll cut off that little nubbin where you started and it lines everything up then so well. So here's the little nubbin that I cut off from starting. So you can see where I started. And that's why you have to have to go past that about an inch and then sew off. <laughs> go Nancy, go Nancy, you got him. <laughs> I was too busy sewing, didn't even see it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do this other side. And always make sure when you're sewing your cuffs on, and I do this all the time. That's why I'm telling you to really pay attention. In fact, I did it on this one and I had to go back. But when I got done, and it's not a big deal if you have to go back, it's just kind of, you, know, you just have to weave in a couple more ends. But when I got done, I noticed one of the underneath fabric had pulled itself, and I'm exaggerating here, but it pulled itself down while I was sewing. And so it wasn't even caught in up here. So it was like from here to here, it wasn't caught. So I had to go back and basically just kind of cut in with, and that's where I used my knife. And I just real carefully eased it in and cut it in and caught it and then come back out again. And then I had to weave in those ends as well. So be extra careful to make sure you have all three layers together. And I'm speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to you guys, because I forget that. And I cannot tell you how many times I have to go back in and catch that. And it's going to be the same for the waistband, too. So we're going to start again. And I always start uh, uh, kind of in the crotch area because if for some reason something doesn't quite start beautifully, nothing wrong with it, but it's not like 100% beautiful, it's hidden down below and nobody will see it. They're not going to say if you start up on top and something doesn't quite look right and you just can't get it to go away, it's going to show all day long. But underneath, nobody's going to see it. So I always start underneath in the crotch area. On if I'm doing um, shirts, I'm starting like in the armpit or someplace like that where I can hide that I'm starting. OK, so now I do not have that middle one. That's where I really, though, have to pay attention that all the layers are lined up because I don't have that second clip helping hold those layers. So when you start doing two clips instead of four, just get in there and make sure when you line everything up that all your layers are lined up. And then you won't have that problem. And it'll take you less time to make sure they're lined up than to go back, catch that, and reweave in two more ends. Okay, so I'm coming back to that start again. So I want to go past it. Go past it. Back. Okay. <laughs> Santi. 
Okay, so now we have the two legs on. Okay, got your two leg cuffs on. Now I'm going to show you real quick before we get a bunch of other layers. It's easier just to show you here how I weave in my ends, and I do it the way Amber shows everybody. So I want to show you again for those of you that have missed it. This is probably one of the best oops, types of needles let me put that back in there, you can use. And this is a knitting and crocheting. And it keeps coming out because <laughs> I've got it open. So this is a knitting and crocheting darning needle. And it looks like this. And it's metal and it has a nice skinny head up here, but not so skinny that you can't get everything in. If you get a plastic one, the head is going to be a lot bigger and it's not going to slide through. And it's also plastic, but the head's going to be so much bigger that you're going to break stitches. So that's why I'm saying you want to get the metal ones. And these usually come with about two or three in a pack and they're awesome. You only need like one pack. You're going to use these for so many other things as well. So I just want to show you guys, this is what it is. And since I'm a knitter, I already had those in my stash. So it was no big deal. I just went and pulled them out. But if you don't, if you aren't a knitter and don't know about those, those are in the knitting section. You can get those at Walmart. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at Joann's. You can get them anywhere. They're actually called yarn needles. And this is a size 16. And it, that's only if you're buying like the boy brand or the rights brand because it says rights up at the top, boy in the middle. Okay. So. I take and I've threaded this and I just run and this is the way Amber does it. I just run it through the top down about well an inch and a half or so. So you can see it'll focus. You can see how it just catches those top. I'm not down on the side. I'm running right through the top and it's super easy. It slides right through. Now then I go through and I pull it back. You don't want to just pull it and then cut. You want to pull it back, then go cut. That way you know you've got that good and secure. If you cut it, when you've got it pulled, it might be too short and then come out. So you want to make sure you pull it before you cut it. But if you forget and you've threaded it in long enough, and I mean threaded it in like this direction long enough, you should be okay. But I'm always of an overkill when it comes to stuff like that because I've just had too many times where things have come out on me when I thought I was okay. And I just didn't take that extra time to do that one step of tugging. And see, this is what we do when we knit and crochet and we weave off ends as well. We don't do it like this, but when we do, when we pull it through, then we always go back and just make sure that it's snugged and it has the longest amount of tail in here before we cut for the exact same reason. You don't want it to come out. Okay, so just wanted to show you guys that while, while there was no other pieces in the way. It was easier to see. Okay, now this is gonna set off to the side for a minute, okay? We're done with this piece for right now. Now we're going to come over and we're going to take our skirt piece, okay? Now, you can do this two ways. I like to do it this way just because I don't really have to fuss with anything. So I'm not going to sew the two ends together to make the ring just yet. I'm going to zip each side with my serger. Now, if you're using your sewing machine, then you'll use your stretch stitch on each side. And you'll definitely want to do that if you have a thinner knit see how this one wants to roll i'm doing that because i don't want it to roll on me while i'm messing with it Use your knife, you can. I just, I, I don't want much of that fabric taken off. And I'm literally just skimming it. That's all the tail from that whole time, whole way down. 
And I'm going to do that twice. Now I know some people's sergers you can use to gather with as well. We're not going to go there today with that, but um, mine doesn't gather very well anyways, but there is ways to do it. And it's changing your settings on your differential feed and on your stitch length, not on your tension. It's the two side ones. If you have the Juki, it's the two side ones. Um, the brother probably has the same thing on the side. I know you're going to have um, your stitch length and you probably will have a differential feed as well. I don't know the brother as much, but um, we're not going to do that today. I'm taking you back to the basics. I want, um, I want you guys to learn how to do it the other way. So we've got that as a fallback with also wovens and anything else in the middle the way that we used to do it before we had all these wonderful tools. And I'll show you this before we do it on the sewing machine too. It's going to blow your mind if you haven't um, seen me do that. So those of you that watch that, I've seen the trick right a couple days before. The credit for it. So this is not my trick. This is something I saw and it was genius. And I tried it and it was really genius. And I was like, where have you, where have you been my whole life? <laughs> it was so good. Okay. So I have both the top, the long sides of the skirt searched. So now I'm going to join my circle, okay? So it'll be like this. And we're gonna join the two long, the two short ends together, not the long ends, the two short ends together. And we just surge those together as well. And I'm gonna cut off all these tails in that process so that I only have two tails and not like six. So make sure either you clip, pin, or if you've done it enough and you feel comfortable holding on to it, that's on too, but just make sure you keep your ends even because it's real easy when you're sewing or you're searching or even sewing for those not to line up. So just pay a little extra attention to that so that they line up. And now I just have the two tails here. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to iron this seam flat. I'm just going to run over the iron and just iron it nice and flat. You know, I am a big proponent on ironing, ironing, ironing. The more you iron, the easier your sewing is. All right, so the next thing we're going to do after you've ironed, you're still at the iron, stay there. I'm going to bring hammer over here. This is my, my goofy. I told you guys about this and I still haven't replaced it. Okay. So now we have, and it doesn't matter which, which side you choose, choose one of the sides and you turn it just so. My thing will never focus. And I'm using this light fabric with white thread, which is not helping any. Okay, here's some green. Turn it just so that edge, you can see right at the edge of your seam, your serge seam that we just did. So if you want to give just a little bit more, you can, you know, but just keep it like that. And that's going to help you real quick iron that flat. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine and do the straight stitch for the hem. Now, you don't have to do that. You can leave it surged on the bottom if you like that look instead of turning a hem. But I'm going to turn a hem for mine, and that's how, how we do it if you want to turn a hem. Okay. So I'm going to iron this up real quick, and then we will be going over to the sewing machine for the next two steps, the ironing or the sewing of the hem and the gathering of the skirt.
And then I'm going to cut this tail just a touch on that surged part because you're going to catch your tail of your surged edge piece that you've got left from doing the side seam, that one side seam or that one. I don't call it side seam, but it's actually a, um, the seam that put the circle together. I'm going to catch that in that seam that hem so I don't have to go back with my with my needle and run it in. And I'll show you that in a second. You know, I've been watching so many people lately and we're all having troubles with words, people words, there's no words. Talking away and then all of a sudden like, words. Where's the words? Okay, so I've just gone, bought, gone and ironed it all down. And what I mean by tucking in your tail, you see how that it's just going to tuck right in when you sew over your hem. I'm just going to tuck it in there and sew it in. Okay. Okay, Robin, what do you need me to show you again? Yeah, I know, Nancy. <laughs> it does because I've, I've got you right at this angle here. And I, I can't do that, that holding the camera under my chin like, like Nairo did. I'm not good. I'm not that talented. Okay, Robin, what did you need me to show you again? Can't believe it's already been an hour. <laughs> this goes so fast. And you guys would laugh if you knew what I put my um, camera on. You're sitting on, remember that big drink cup that I use for my water that I always show you? It's as big as my head. Well, you're sitting on top of that with the camera right now. <sighs> um, it's the long way. Okay, so Robin, I first I ironed the short seam over so it's nice and flat. And then I turned it and I ironed the long seam all the way around, just over, okay? So you'll tuck your, tuck your long tail underneath, turn it over just so that the surged part, and when you turn it, it'll kind of make sense because it just kind of naturally wants to stop there. So turn it over and it's right at the edge of the top of your surged part right up here. And it's hard to see with that color. I don't know if that's gonna show any better. You see that? That's all the further I'm turning it, okay? All right, so I'm going to reposition the camera, girls. Let's just like, just cook away for a minute, okay? I'm going to go over to, I'm going to turn this off. I'm using one extension cord for the three, so i got to make sure I turn things off accordingly <laughs> so that we don't have... That would be funny. I'm going to have to go outside and do that in the dark and find my fuse box. I keep forgetting, and I'll just do stuff like that, and it's like, oh, yeah, fuse. Okay, we're not quite done with the serger, so don't 100% get rid of your serger yet. So here. Now that I'm sitting at this, I got to figure out how I'm going to show you guys. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so my stitch length on my sewing machine goes to 
a five. So I'm going to set my stitch at a three. If your machine goes to a six, then probably like a three and a half or a four. And this is for sewing down the hem. So that'll be your stitch length. Now, if I could just figure out how to hold this. This would be the perfect angle for you guys. Holding with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to put this in there and then we'll figure it out. Hang on. And then make sure if your machine has the ability to have stop with the needle down, you want to do that. Okay. And my machine is not very, have a very bright light. So that is what we've got going on. So you can see I've got my needle down halfway in the middle of that surged area. And then that's where my tail is sitting. So I'm starting right there. So I catch my tail right away. If you do it at the end, when you're sewing around, it can flop out and then you'll forget and then you'll have to put it back under with that needle. So I always start and do that first. So we're going to make sure that you reverse and then go forward in my, of course, my foot. Of course it did. So I'm trying to do this one handed. Hold oh, please. Okay, and we're back. So make sure you go, oops, I don't know, hit the wrong, I always hit the wrong button. This is a sewing embroidery combo, and both of my machines are that, and I always hit the wrong one. So it's going to go backwards a couple of stitches, and then you want to go forward. And that'll lock in your your end there so it will not go undone. So don't forget to do that. And so now I've buried my tail from my serge. Okay, this is not working too so one handed. Sorry guys. The rest of this is going to be just me doing the hem right down the middle. And is right in the way. Okay, there we go. Hey, invisible angel. Yes, you can. Wanna? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, the knit that I'm using is cotton. You can do a hem this way, even with a, a cotton woven, with a satin, with anything. This is just a basic way of doing a hem. So it's, not, um, it's not fabric specific. going all the way around. I always leave, and I'll show you this, I always leave a longer tail when I do my startup on my seam. And here's why. So when I'm sewing, oh, that's how much further I have to go. It's right here. And I want to sew past that, you know, about a half an inch or so. So that I know everything is caught. 
And then I can go backwards and forwards real quick. So here's where I started. And here's where I stopped. So you can see there's, you know, you can see when it focuses. So you can see I started and I stopped. And I lost my there. And this machine is like 20 years old, so it does not have the sweet little feature of trimming for me. So I just do all that with the scissor. Okay, so we now have we now have the hem put in all the way around. Okay, I want to make sure everybody's caught up at this point. Okay, hey Ollie, I haven't seen you hanging out much. All right, girls, tell me when you're caught up to that point because I want to do the gathering of the skirt next and i want to show you the little sweet trick i learned from a person on another youtube video i really wished i knew who that was i always end up with little extra threads here so just my little ocd cut those off okay robin's ready sarah's ready ediani are you still with us And then I'll move the camera back over. Let's show you guys what we're doing here. I think you girls may have seen this, but I'm going to explain it again. You still with us, Ediani? Okay, so we're at the sewing machine. I'm going to explain this first. Set your stitch length to the highest it'll go, whether it be a five or a six. Set it to the highest you'll go, okay? Now, I always have this, and... I kind of wondered, Ediani, that's why I was asking. I figured baby girl was probably demanding some attention. So I'm going to open this up, not because I want to see this, but because we're going to get at this thread right here that is being fed. Okay, so the thread, and of course, white on white. This thread right here. Okay, so it's don't pull on it. Just get a little tiny gap, okay? So you're going to pull from your bobbin up just a tiny bit, okay? Don't unthread your, your thread down below here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, sorry, I'm moving the camera. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't think about that. I had it in my hand. So we've got this here, and we're going to run that long stitch and I'll show y'all, move it over there, right along underneath that serge stitch. So we're going to run a long based stitch. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to slightly hold on to that thread up above that you just created a little gap in. You're not going to hold it hard, but you're going to hold it. You're going to give it a little tension and it's going to naturally gather this for you as you hold that. So when you first do it, you might want to try it on a piece of fabric so that you get the feel because you don't want to hold real hard. And then once you figure out the feel, you're going to be like, that's genius. So. Make sure I'm not missing anything here. Okay. And I know I just hit the camera. I'm going to set up my thread first and drop my needle so that I can show you guys where I'm at. Okay. You are not, and I repeat again, you are not 
going to sew backwards and forwards here, okay? Make sure you have a long tail back here, okay? I'm trying to see. So I've probably got about four to five inches. You can have it even longer. It makes sure you have a long, long tail back here, and we are not going to lock that thread on this base stitch. This is a gathering stitch. Now, if you don't want to do this on the machine, you can also do this by hand and do a base stitch with real big, long running stitches. And that's the way that, you know, we used to do it when I was a kid, when we were learning how to do this. We weren't even allowed to do it on the machine yet, but we're going to do it on the machine. Okay. So you see how I'm sitting? I wish that light was brighter on the machine. I'm sitting right at the bottom edge of that serge stitch. That's where I'm going to run this base stitch. Now, while that's sewing, I'm going to hold this just like this to give it a little bit of tension. And then that's going to cause a natural gathering on the back side of my fabric back here. Now, don't worry about if you get too much gathering because we can ease it out. I would sooner there be just a little too much than not enough because it's easier to ease it out than to put it back in, which is why you're going to have that long tail. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and get going and you might see it starting to gather as I do this. See how it pulls it up. You see how it's gathering it already right back here. That's because I've got just, I'm pulling against it, but I'm letting the thread go through my fingers, okay? But you're giving it extra tension. So just take your time on this part. You don't have to get too excited and go fast. So right at the very bottom of that serge stitch, use that as your guide. Sewing. And you, if you've got this where you can pull your front off and just use the arm of your sewing machine and get rid of the front and you feel like that's easier, go ahead and do that. There's times I do that, but after I've gotten sewing, I realize, oh, it's in my way and I'll pull it off. And other times I kind of like to have it on if it gives me a little more sewing space that I feel like I need. get caught underneath because I do have that front still on instead of my free sewing arm. Now I'm going to go past that where I started because it wasn't really gathered just a little bit. Okay. So now when I pull this off, I'm going to leave a really long tail. I squeeze where this was at, where I stopped. Squeeze it so that you can pull your thread out real slowly. And then I want to leave a long, long tail there too. Okay. So when I get done, this is naturally gathered. And then I've got these really long tails over here where I started and stopped. Okay. <laughs> Liz. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, good, Eddie, Yeah. The skirt, yeah, you'll you'll need to have probably do that while little girl's sleeping. Okay, so now we're at this point. Let me know when you guys 
have your skirt gathered. I don't know if I've got enough. If I don't have enough, this is why we have long tails, because we can add, add extra gathering in if we need to. But if you have to let it out, that's another reason why you need this really long tail, because you've got to have room to be able to let that out without your thread coming undone and then pulling out. And then all of a sudden you don't have anything that's gathered at all because you didn't have a long enough tail and you just pulled it right out. This part can be a little fiddly the first couple of times you do it. So be patient with yourself. Okay. Be very patient with yourself. And I sometimes have to sit and do it in my lap when I was first learning it and literally just, have everything out of the way. I had to have the table there. I had to have, it took me a while. I was fiddling. I would pin like every eighth of an inch, everything until I got the feel of it. So don't be hard on yourself. It's just, it's just a learning finger eye coordination learning thing. If you're, if you're struggling with it, it'll be fine. Okay. So you're going to turn your bummies right side out now for this next step. Okay, so we want them right side out. Are you leaving us, Michelle? Okay, night, Michelle. Thanks for joining us. Move this out of the way. We are going back to the sewing machine again, so don't put your sewing machine away. So we've got to attach these on. Okay. Let me know when you girls are at this point. We'll do this part together. I tried to, I was curious if this would work, and I tried to sublimate this piece of fabric for the bummies because I thought that would be really fun if I could do that and be able just to have some different fabrics by just making some outfits to go with the skirted bummies for market. It didn't go so well with my little heat press, I had a lot of ghosting going on. And I've done stuff like that before. And I thought, oh, it'll be okay, because I've done it before. And I don't think it's gonna be a problem. It was probably the fact that it was 34 inches long. And my heat press is small. <laughs> so that piece didn't come out so well. So I was like, oh, okay, chuck that idea for now. Sandra. Hey, hey, how are you? Good to see you. All right. So next step, I'm going to start and you guys can catch up. We are going to start where we had taken the tails. Okay. So you got your long tails here. That's where we're going to start. And the skirt goes over the bunnies. And don't worry about things maybe being a little flat right there. Just get all your tails out. Lay them all nice and flat. It's all about the tails right now. Get all your tails so that they're all laying nice. Now, if you need to pin, use pins at this point. I'm going to um, use my clips still. But don't be hard on yourself if you have to use pins at this point. All good. We're going to do kind of the same thought process where we take and we do the skirt half across because it looks like I'm going to have to gather mine. I didn't get overly crazy with gathering of my skirt, which is probably good because then I can show you guys if you didn't get carried away with gathering yours either how to fix that. And it's easy. 
So we're doing just like we did when we put the cuffs on and then we'll put the um, waistband on because we're going to do sides and sides together. So you're going to find your halfway points and then you're going to come across and real carefully find your other two points. So you're gonna, you don't want to pull on this gathered. You don't want to do this. You're going to lose your gathers. So just real carefully. And I'm still pulling my tails out here. In fact, that's kind of a little crazy. I don't need those. I'm just cutting my serge tails only. Do not cut your basting tails. I'm just going to cut those down a little bit. They keep wanting to get in the way. Hey, Anna, how are you? Okay, so center again, the other direction, and clip. And you're clipping both the skirt and the bummy together. I'm going to pretend like this is your waistband that you're putting on, but it's the skirt. Again, the waistband is the very last thing we're going to put on. So I've got my, you can see it's not quite tight enough. We're close. Not quite. I'm going to see just how far off I really am. It looks like on this one, it's not bad on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and I clip a lot because I want to hold all my little gatherings where they're supposed to be. I don't want them moving when I go to sew them. So that's why I'm saying if you pin a lot, pin a lot. If you're going to, if you feel comfortable using clips, clip a lot. I will always do this. Okay, so that side looked like it was fine. Try this one. Yeah, this one's okay. So I don't need to tighten up that one full side on one. That's cool. I thought I was going to have to. That first one I did was way too tight, so I had to loosen things up. Now this next one, I was afraid I was going to go the other direction and not do it hard enough. Okay, so my one side is okay. And look at all the clips I've got. I'm not kidding. I clip, I pin, I go crazy that. Okay, now let's try this other side. Now I'm going to work away from the last part I'm going to do on both sides. The last part you do is closest to your long tails. That way you've got the ability to ease that in if you need to. And I'll show you how to do that because I think I'm going to have to do it on this in a little bit. So I'm starting away on the other side away from it and it looks like I'm still okay there but I think that other quarter I'm gonna have to add a little gathering which will be good to show you guys that either way I'm gonna show you whether I need it or not and I'm gonna show you how in case you do too much what you do okay so I got most of mine clipped so now we're gonna show you what to do All right, so this is my last quarter. And it looks like I'm okay, but I'm just going to pretend I'm not. So if I have to add, then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find a tail. And you're going to pull on it ever so slowly. And I'm pulling the wrong one. And you're just going to have to try until you find the right one. The one you started with, not the one you ended with. So that is underneath that clip. Okay. The 
Oh, it's the furthest one away because I'm going that direction. And then all you do is you just add your gathers, okay? So you pull this and keep adding until you find out that you've got enough and you see how it just pulls and gathers. Now, I got too much, okay? So if you had too much, then all you're going to do is real carefully ease it out because here's your end that you're easing it away from. These are those long tail ends. So ease it out and just keep measuring it. And since this is only on a quarter, I can kind of do this, but you've got where I can flatten it, pull it and flatten it, but be very careful because it's gonna get flat right here because that's where it's releasing. That's where those tails are. And so you could easily end up with a flat there. We can fix that, that's easily done. So I'm gonna go ahead and Clip all this, and then I'll show you how to fix that flat part. Make sure everything, this keeps wanting to turn under, so I want to make sure that that's nice and flat. This is, like I said, this is fussy. So just take your time. And I'm going to come back and move this one back over. Now it's a little flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add one little gather by hand and clip it. So it's not pulled by the threads. I just added it. And that's what I'm going to do right here. Also, I'm just going to add one little gather because that's kind of a flat area and it might show when we sew the band on. And then just get everything all lined up so all your edges are even. Flip it. Now these tails, we're just going to have to keep these tails out of the way while we secure this down, okay? So here is the skirt added on with the clips, okay? All right, did I lose my girls? Robin, Sierra, are you like really far behind me or are you keeping up? Do I need to stop and wait for a minute? Do I need to repeat anything for you? Let me know where, you, where you're at here. Those that it just came in or have been coming in and don't know what we're doing is we are doing the ruffled bummies with a, well, a ruffled skirt on the bummies. So this is the bummy pattern, excuse me, that we sewed a year ago that I showed you how to do the bummies on. Exact same pattern, we're just adding a skirt to it. So if you've already got the pattern or you have a bummy pattern of any kind, then you can watch how to do the skirt, okay? So, and the skirt does not come with the pattern. It's just one that I'm telling you the dimensions earlier in the video. For. Okay, Robin's ready. Okay, Sierra's ready. Okay, now. If you clipped, take your clips with you. If you pinned, take your pin box with you because we're going to have to pull these if you didn't put them in. If you clipped, you're going to have to pull regardless. If you pinned and you get them in the way, you're going to want to pull your pins as you're going so you don't sew them, okay? So I'm going to move this again. We're going back to the sewing machine. Let's see if I've got something I can set you guys on. Yeah, that's right. Right, I'm just gonna have to move this machine away. Yeah. All right. All right, set your straight stitch to your longest stitch possible. So like I said, mine is on a five because that's the highest it goes. If your goes to a six, put it on a six. What we're going to do is we're going to baste this on. We are not going to go back and forth and lock the stitch just like we did not do on the gathering because this is just purely a baste. And what you're going to do is you are going to run right where you put 
that original base stitch in, you're going to run right over that again with this stitch, okay? Again, I like to pull a longer tail on these as well, just in case I need it. It doesn't have to be as long. And I always start where my tails were. I want to secure that down first. So I'm going to take out, I'm not going to take out where those tails are. I'm going to take out behind the one clip or the one pin behind is where I'm going to start. And I'm just going to make sure I'm getting it in the right spot. I dropped my needle. Okay, right there. Get it to focus. Come on, focus. Focus, focus. So here is where my stitching was, okay? So now we're just going to baste this on all the way around, removing. I got to remove my clips as I go. If you pinned it on, you may or may not have to remove your pins. Depending on if it's in your way, how much you can be able to see with this. It's kind of in my way at this moment. So. Okay. So I'm just going to run this around. It's going to take me a few minutes because i got to stop every now and then and pull out a clip like right now. And I'm going to be going over where my tails are at this point. Pull my tails so that they're all up here. Don't, don't get them caught in it. Keep them up. And make sure all your ruffles go slow. Make sure all your ruffles go under. So you're securing this so that when we go put the waistband on, you don't have to mess with this. And I don't know how, I don't care how many years you've sewn, you're probably going to always want to do this step. It's kind of... This just kind of makes life easy. Or at least I've never been able to skip this stuff and make it come out looking nice. And the more you do these, the easier this becomes. So just remember the first time you do any of these patterns, it's going to take you a lot longer. And always I'm stopping to make sure everything is lying nice and flat. And I'll even move some of my gathers if I don't feel like they're evenly spaced. So this is the perfect time to do that. Now I want everything to lay flat so there's no bulk when we go to put the band on. I mean, there's gonna be a little bit of bulk, but if everything's laying nice and flat, it'll be a nice, seam to sew over. And I love to use my scissors. As you're noticing, I use my scissors as a tool. And I will move ruffles pieces as I need to with my scissors. See how easily it moves along that basting stitch we put in. So I'm just evening them out as I go. That's all I'm doing. find out too um, when you have scissors like this that have a nice flat surface to them you'll start using them as a tool besides just cutting I, I use these all the time to help guide um, fabric under so I will sometimes just kind of help guide my when I have fabric that's maybe needing just a little bit of a help to go under the foot and I'll just use that or you can use a butter knife. I use a butter knife on my leather when I'm sewing my leather to help guide it underneath. And it just, it makes my life so easy. It's like 
I can't sew any of my leather without that butter knife in my right hand well, or my left hand. Which hand do I do? I think it's in my right hand. It's just kind of like a part of me anymore. So eating utensils do have sewing purposes. Just saying. And you're probably going, who knew? <laughs> okay, I'm almost around. It just takes a little time. But you pull a clip, line everything up. This is why I clip so much, because when I pull a clip, I'm not leaving myself exposed for a very far reach. So if you end up having a few problems, it's only an inch or two. And you can kind of get everything all adjusted back again. And then I'm looking for where I started. I'm coming up to my last clip. I'm going to make sure I know where I'm going before I remove it. And I'm going to sew past where I started again. I always want to go about a half an inch past. Okay. Let's come over here. We are done with the sewing machine. So if you are using a serger and a sewing machine, you're finished with your sewing machine. All right, so now it is on. And I have all these little, these little ends over here. So we can go ahead and trim those off a little bit. We'll get them when we serge, but I still like to take them down. Give them a haircut. They don't need to be that long anymore. It just makes it a lot easier when we go to the last steps. So you don't have as many long ends you're trying to keep track of. So I just give them a little bit of a haircut. And then I've got a surged one over here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a haircut from that side seam of the bummy. Okay. So now our last part that we're doing is we are going to put the waistband on. So we're going to go ahead and fold that in half again like we did with the, the cuffs on the legs. Put my clip on there. And just make sure everything is all perfectly in half. This is the one that I always have a little more fiddly time with. This jersey is a little stickier, so I'm having a better time with it. But on my other ones that are like this, they tend to want to move a lot. So it seems like this waistband takes me a little longer. Okay, so here's where my seams are. And here's my other half. Put that in. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can go ahead and put this in and then find the other two points once you've clipped those two on. Or you can find the two points now and clip them. Either way works. So then I have four. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna turn this back inside out and you are going to put your skirt on the inside okay so we're inside out again and i got one little catch there but it's okay because that's when we put this on it's going to catch it anyways and it's not that big of a catch so i'm not going to worry about that but if you have a real bad one you can go ahead and go back and just kind of clip that and re-sew back over it just a few stitches if you want to or sew over it first and then clip it whichever works for you if you have one that's super, super bad. And it can happen. It can happen to everybody. Okay, so can't see the skirt, right? Because it's on the inside. So make sure that's all nice and flat in there before we go and add the waistband. Now, again, if this is directional, this is like we did with the cuffs. you got to make sure. 
So I'm going to, this is not directional, so I'm going to go ahead and pin it and then show you if you do have directional, again, how I check that. And I check every single time I'm learning. And a lot of times, even when I go to do these with my clips or pins, I'll do on each side of like my first seam because it just kind of seems like it doesn't want to lay too nice. So I'll just go and put that in there. So I'll have two right where I'm going to start. And then this other one goes over here to the other side where the other side seam is. So you're doing your side seams first. Get those clipped in good. And then if you have to do two on that side too, go for it. Sometimes I do just makes everything lay nicer for me. And I know I've got it when I start sewing, I know it's solid and I'm not going to pull that out. Okay. So now we've got a sandwich going on and I've got to place these two. So don't pull too hard because you want it to be a true center. So what I'll do is I'll find this center here just by kind of doing that without moving this. Then I walk this center piece back to that clip. I don't try and take the clip to it. And then that way you don't stretch it and it's a true center. So find your center over here. So take your side clips, side, get them right together and then find your center not stretching it, walk it back to where this clip is. Got a long tail, it's gonna get in the way. Give it a haircut. All right, so now all we have to do is go back to the serger if you're using your serger this on the sewing machine then go back to your sewing machine and we are going to carefully stretch and lay this flat and serge it or sew it on so we're doing the waistband don't forget if you're doing your sewing machine lock that back stitch back forth back forth before you get going since you're doing if you're doing the serger then we just do with um you know just get going and then you come back and sew over it like i was showing you earlier Nancy, pounce. <laughs> I knew you were waiting for that one. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm going to put it underneath, and I always start close to a side seam. And this is kind of in the back. Remember I was telling you how I kind of like to hide where I start. I always start in the back on these. I'm move my first either pin or clip and then we'll get going. And you remember you're going to stretch just a little bit on that waistband to fit to the outer piece out here. So the waistband on the inside is the part you're stretching, not the outside. So you got your hand on the inside, you're just pulling on that just a little bit to let get it to fit so it lays flat. And then make sure you cover, you're covering this stitch that you just did. Make sure you're catching that at least in the middle of your stitch that you're doing to join this together or further down. If you have a knife and a serger and you're cutting further down, that's fine. Just make sure you have that at least in your stitch or higher, not down here. I 
and for the most part, you probably don't want to too much. It should fit pretty well. A small stretch. And this is where you can see how powerful my Juki is. This is why I love it because it just cuts through this like butter. And then when I get to like the side seam and I've got all these seams, I don't even think twice about it. I just keep right on a going. It just powers right through it. And this is the part where if your machine is balking a little bit, just take your time. So we're inside out. Now turn it the other way. And there's your skirted bunnies. Then you just want to press them really good because you've got your your seams are kind of going every which way just because of that. But you have skirted bunnies. Pretty easy, wasn't it? It's just a little bit fiddly until you get used to working with this extra layer. And that's why I was like, you guys are ready for this. This was, we've done the bummies. We've done all of these kinds of types of applications with the cuffs and everything. So it's time to add one more step and take it up a notch and teach you guys one more thing. So there you go. And you can do the same thing with the skirt on a pair of leggings if it has, you know, like this type of the waistband. Same exact process. It's just this part's the leggings. So... You see those out there? You can even do a double skirt if you want. So your first skirt will be longer. Your second skirt would be just a little bit shorter for the ruffles. And then you can either put them on one at a time or you can work them together as one piece and sew them together, so the two together, so that they become one piece of fabric just like this did again and then go on like we did here. That's the only difference. And I would probably use them as one so I would cut the two out and then I would sew the side seams because they're going to be the same length. Sew the side seams, then put one on top of the other. Good thing I have all this fabric laying over here. So you've got, say so you've got this piece and then you're going to have this piece. So you've got your two lengths. And you're going to sew them together at the top and then hem each bottom separately. And then it's one piece when you go to gather them so that they're gathered together. Okay. So if you guys have any questions about how to do that, you want to do that, we can go over that at another time. But I just thought, well, it's super easy. You just have to really think the first time you do it. And then after you've done it the first time, you're like, oh. That was easy. So yeah, it's just one of those things where you just gotta wrap your mind around it and then you'll be good. It is. That's why I do it that way, Wana. Um, yeah, and you can do where you do the hem and then sew the side seam. You can do that as well. Um, this is uh, where you, do the side seam first and then do it. It's kind of more of a, I don't want to say a professional way, but a, a, um, you'll see it more often done this way in clothing in the store, but there's nothing wrong if you want to take your two pieces of material or take your piece of material that you cut, serge, serge, do your hem, then sew them in a circle. You can do that as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, you're welcome, Danny. You're welcome, Robin. Oh, are you new, Craftable Things? Well, hello. Welcome. Oh, Anna, we miss sewing with you, too. I miss you, girl. I haven't talked to you much lately. You've been busy. I hope you're having a good new year. I was reading some of your posts earlier, so. 
Hope your new year's going well. Patrice, Patrice, are you craftable things? So um, two weeks from tonight is going to be the weekend of Valentine's Day. So I've got to try and, okay, thanks, Liz. Um, I've got to, I was trying to think today. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was going to be that weekend. So I've got to try and see if I can't find something Valentine's related. I don't know if I will or not, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and see if I can come up with something that would be kind of fun for a quick Valentine's Day since it's um, the day before. And if you guys wanted to do something. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, good, Liz. I know you were talking about that earlier. So, yeah, you're going to be so glad you did that. Oh, thanks, Ediani. Your little girl's going to look so cute in these. You are just sewing stuff up like crazy. And this, if anybody wants to know, this is a 12 to 18 month that I did. So I was like, well, I might as well make a couple market samples. So these two will be going to market, and I'll probably make up some different sizes to go with it. And take those to market with me in two weeks because they are kind of fun. I'm just kind of bummed that I couldn't get my uh, sublimation to work. And I don't want to take time to mess with it right now. I know I'll probably figure it out. But I don't want to mess with it. I don't have that kind of time. So market's two weeks away. So I got to do the fast way for now. Oh, absolutely, Sierra. I hope I didn't lose you guys. I was trying to trying to keep it slow and talk a lot while you guys were working. So did you guys get done? And anybody that does these, please send me either pictures or post pictures on Discord if you're on Discord. If not, you know, text me a picture on Instagram. I'd love to see it. Or even on Facebook. You can send it to me on Facebook. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoy doing it. It's fun. And these little projects are a blast. Just a blast. Oh, thanks, Sandy. Oh, cool. I want to see that, Ediani. I want to see that. She's. You guys have to go see some of the stuff Ediani's been making. She tries to say she doesn't know how to sew, but the girl can sew. She's doing good. I have to say, though, I think it's the <laughs> She. Uh, she came to me when she was going to buy a serger, and I, I told her she needed this one, and I think she likes it. I hope you like it. I like it. It's a little workhorse. So, yeah, if anybody doesn't have a serger and you're looking, go check out this one. It is just a little more, but it's a powerhouse, as you saw. It goes through everything like butter. I have not had it balk yet. <gasps> Eddie, honey, we got to talk. I want to know. I want to know. Ah. Um. Can somebody post the Discord links in here? Ediani, you, are you okay with posting your link? Nairo, are you still on? You okay with posting the link in here? Because you have to have a link to find us. I don't think you can just go and find us and join. I think it, it works that way. Am I right? I don't know. I don't have a Discord channel. I'm just part of everybody else's, so... I don't know, but yeah, if one of the mods wants to go ahead and post those, that's awesome. So trying to figure out why my wrenches are blue, but the names are gray. And I wonder if it's just because it's my channel where they're blue when everybody else is looking, I think. I know, bummies are fun, Juana. Mm -hmm. I love making them, and I, I it's one of my three best sellers at my marketplace is my bummies and i'm glad i like making them oh it is blue on the end okay that's weird because on my side on my channel it's, your names are gray it's just the wrench is blue bizarre okay cool there's ediani's discord and then nairo said it's fine so if one of the mods wants to go ahead and post nairo's discord link and then um crafting away you can go join both of us 
join us on both of those because a lot of us are on both, but it's still fun to be on both because we have different discussions going and you'll be discussing one thing over here and something else over here. And then you have some people that are over here that aren't over here. So it's fun to be on both. And we do a lot of um, getting together and chatting in the Night Owls one. And so you'll see people hanging out chatting all hours of the day and night in a private, in a, like a private room. It's so much fun. Okay, cool. That's just weird that they're, they're gray on my side. Hmm. Did you post yours, Robin? I can't find my phone. I realized my phone was dying, so I had to plug it in. All right, where is it? Where did you put it, Robin? Under gender, maybe? I never know where to go, Lick. There they are. Oh, those turned out so cute, Robin. Oh, so, so cute. I like that combination. And you did the pink underneath like I did. Cute, cute. Love it. And then you guys realize too, you could do a real short skirt and it would be just kind of like a little ruffle if you wanted to, just a real short one. And so it'd be just a ruffle around the top too. That would be really, really sweet. So play with the lengths of your ruffles. You could put um, an underneath one that is lace. So you got lace hanging out and then a shorter one above, or you could do tulle underneath and a shorter one above or one that's the same length as the tool. And, you know, it's kind of like the tool sticks it out like an old time dress when they used to have the tool um, underskirts underneath. So play with this. This is such a fun little thing that you can do on so many other items. And now that you know how to do one of those little short like that, you can add those to the bottom of shirts. So you know how to do that. That's just a ruffle. That's all that is, is a ruffle. And so you can put this on the bottom of, sh of your skirts, your shirts, anything. Oh, you're so welcome. Danny did, or Sarah, did you uh, post yours? Or if you're not done yet, that's cool. So anyway, yeah, um, two weeks from tonight, again, Valentine's Day, I'm going to try and think of something that we can do a so long that if you guys want to have something cute, like for your kids for the next morning, and, you know, they're not even going to pay attention that you're sewing because mommy is always sewing. So that's going to be boring. I'm going to go do something else. And so you can make them something really cute. Like when we did the, um, the animal, the little stuffed animal uh, last year, you remember that one? Something similar to that, I think, is what I'm going to try and come up with. So I'll see. I hope I can find something. Because that would just be perfect. Perfect timing. Yes, thanks, Mary. Yes, new people. If you're not my sub, I'm trying really hard to get to 1,000. And it's all just, you know, slowly getting there. I'm getting one here and one there. So... Help me get there. Share my channel, please. Subscribe, like, all that. So, yeah, and then um, I'm writing down some lists of some things where I'm going to do just standalone videos, like little, even some little shorts. So, like I was telling you about, um, showing you the difference of woven and knit, in the way I showed, I don't remember who I showed, might've been Nancy. And I could make that into like a little 15, 20 minute video very easily and go over the different types of knits and what that really looks like 
with my example and then the woven and then with my example. And I can't explain the example any more than that. But once I show it to you, you're going to be like, oh, well, that makes some sense. So it, it takes the visual into a very larger format for you. So you can really, really see what knit looks like and really, really, really see what woven looks like. And we're going to, I'm going to do that kind of as a short. And so I've got a bunch of them. I'm going to like, I wrote lists down, like on how to put in a zipper, how to do a buttonhole, um, things like that. So I'm going to do little shorts, little short videos on those. That way you guys don't, if you want to watch something real quick, because I know there's times when I'm like, oh, I just want to, I just want to like this little 10, 15 minute video. And so that's why I'm thinking things like that would be really great. Like you're driving somewhere, you can listen. And then when you get there, you can rewatch it again or rewatch it when the kids are like winding down or something and see it again or something. So I'm trying to take things that I know I like or I look for and maybe try and turn those into videos for you guys. So I, um, oh, <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I was talking, I think it was you the way we did the woven versus knit example. I think it was you. Um, so little things like that. I'm making lists and then you guys are giving me ideas as well. So this year's going to be a lot of that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to start diving into some of these. Um, oh, it was Sandy. Okay. I knew it was one of you two. I couldn't remember. Um, I want to dive into taking you guys in a little further now because last Last year was all about doing basics and getting you started and showing you how to do things without all the other little, I want to call them fussy details because they just take a little time, but they're really not fussy. So that would be zippers and buttons and, and stuff like that, Velcro, things like that. So we will start walking you a little closer to that area. So taking you a little more into some skills. That way, if you guys see some things you don't you want to make you don't walk away from it because you're like oh it has this or it has that we'll we'll also show you ways that well if it has this and you don't want to do this you can use this instead or learn ways to rework things a little bit so instead of maybe doing um a zipper we'll do a tie you know things like that so slow things like that the rest of this year um little shorts little workarounds Aw, oh, Liz, thanks. So, yeah, I, I think you guys are ready for that. I wanted to do it last year, but I didn't want to do it too soon. I, I don't, I, I knew you guys were still trying to learn some of the other things first. So, yeah, it was Sandy. That's right. I knew, I couldn't remember. I just, all of a sudden I had it sitting right there and I was like, oh, here, let me show you. And then all of a sudden that was an aha moment. And I was like, wow. That really kind of was a perfect visual. So um, you could do either, Robin. At market, I'm going to do it both ways. Um, it just depends upon my timing right now, too. But um, I will sell some of them separately. And then I have shirts that match it. And so sometimes I have them separate over here. And then I have a couple with a shirt to show them as well. Like, oh, well, this shirt goes with it. So... You know, and I do that with my bummies. I do that with my hair and pants. I do it with all of it where I've got some that have shirts that match and then they can buy the shirt separately. They can buy the pants separately. It's not necessarily sold as a set. It's just a retail thing where you take a pair of pants, you take a shirt that goes with it, you put it on the mannequin. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. Wow, has it been two hours already? Time went fast, guys. So quick. So quick. And I'm back down in the studio again. So this feels good. I enjoy being down here. And I was upstairs there for a little while. Some of the shorts will be upstairs. I'm just going to tell you, I'm also trying to do, somebody had asked me to do um, an Embrilliance Essentials video. I have to on that. So I'm in the process of doing that. And I had to redo, like, the, the front take because I'm, I'm doing like me talking first and then I'm going to take you to the, the computer and show you from there the rest of the time. And I kept stumbling over in brilliance essentials. It would have been the greatest outtakes. Oh, it was hilarious. It probably took me about 10, 10 or 12 takes 
before I finally could say it. And I finally had to shut the camera off for a minute and just say it over and over and over because I kept stumbling over it when I got to it. It was so funny. So, yeah, I, no, we're not going to do outtakes yet. Maybe down the road I'll do outtakes, but not these first few until I kind of see how all this works out. Because <laughs> you know me, I've only been doing lives, I usually. And I want to get away from that a little bit and do lives along with other things. So give you guys a little more content. Yes, if you haven't hit the like button, please, please, please. I know, and I will, Nancy, I will. I just, right now, I, I'm gonna, I, they were funny, but they weren't like outtake funny. They were more funny to me. So I don't think you guys probably would have found it funny. <laughs> there was a couple times though when I was just starting to crack myself up. So got that on camera and I was dying laughing. But again, like I said, it was more funny for me. But I'm sure there will be, by the end of the year, I'm sure I can put together just a video of outtakes. So if I get some good outtakes, I'll start putting those into a, a separate folder and then maybe just do an outtake outtake video, however long it is, and just post that. That could be fun. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else um, that I was thinking of for up and coming. I know somebody had mentioned an Easter dress with a sash. So that's going to be one of them coming up here real soon because um, Easter will be coming out quicker than we think. <laughs> so I just told myself the other night when I was starting to lay things out, I was like, oh, that's got to be sooner than later. So that one's going to be coming up real fast, real fast. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys laugh. I don't know. Sometimes what we think is funny, others are like, yeah, not so funny. So I, I, I worry about that, that I'll put together all these outtakes and think they're hilarious. And you guys are going to be like, yeah, you're not funny. <laughs> oh, no way, Nancy. My nieces ends up on Easter every now and then, too. When is Easter this year? I didn't even pay attention. What month? It's sometimes March, sometimes April. Let me see. Oh, so it's in April. Okay, cool, cool. Cool, cool. So, yeah, time to get on that wagon, though. So that'll probably be the one I do at the end of February, then. Because the 13th, if I can find that Valentine's Day one, then February 27th would be good timing to give you guys time to make Easter dresses. Then I'll give you all of March. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> awesome. We'll let them announce that if they wanna if they wanna share. That's cool though to have birthday buddies. I have a lot of birthday buddies. Who knew? But then I started thinking about what time of year it was when that happened. Oh well, you know, New Year's Eve. First week of January, cold weather, holidays. Of course, I have birthday buddies. That only makes sense. So, a lot of birthday buddies. All right, guys. I think I've run out of all kinds of things to say. I don't know how you did 12 hours, Liz. I really don't. I know you had people on that helped, but still, you had to do a lot of talking. I'm running out of things after two hours. Yeah, that's for sure, Nancy. <laughs> that's the reason why I was noobs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Truth starting to come out now. Ah, uh, yeah, and you had every reason to, Liz. That was a lot. You did really good, though. You hung in there. You still had a lot of energy at the end. It was fun, though. It was a lot, a lot of fun. It just made my whole weekend. So when are you doing again? Evil words, I know. Evil words.
All right, I want to see. I want to see bummies soon. Even if it's with, without the skirts, I want to see the bummies. I want to see what you guys are doing. Start posting a lot of that stuff because I know you guys are making good stuff. Yes, yes. 24 hours next, Nancy says. <laughs> yeah, Liz is saying never, ever, ever for sure. And then we had um, Keenan was offering up Angela at first to do it until we reminded him how long it was. And then he decided maybe it wasn't a good idea to do a 24 hour. <laughs> he thought twice about it. That was cute. That was so cute. And I wish we had another one of those, um, what was it, the, man, what they call it, the embroidery con that she was at. I wish we had one of those coming up again. Ours was a couple months ago. I'm so ready now. Hey, that'd be okay. We could do that, Liz. We can watch you sleep. 24 hours, you would have to sleep at some point. Somebody would have to take over for you. There's just no way. That would be brutal. It would just be really, really hard. You know, I've had to stay up for 24 to 48 hours when I was in college. And that was rough. Yeah, creepers. Yeah. Yeah, that probably would be a little creepy. You'd have to sneak away and not be on camera. But yeah, staying up that late, that's hard on the body for that long. It's hard to get back on schedule again. It takes a couple days. All right, everybody. Well, I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. Thank you for joining me for the sew along. These are fun. I am so glad we're back and doing them again and we're into a new year. And I'm excited to see where we're at next year at this time and how many things we've done, too. That was fun checking out where, where we got last year. And so I'm excited to see where this next year takes us. So thanks, guys. And make sure you post. Show me what you're doing. Okay. And give me some ideas. If there's something out there you want to learn, I will write it down and try and work it into my videos somewhere. Okay. Well, you have a good rest of your evening and hope you have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.